counseling student get and who would benefit. And I just, just want to do a couple more around this. First, um, I want to ask the question about who the student borrowers are. Borrowers and graduates are not the same. About 40% of borrowers don't make it to a degree. So they are paying off student loans on a high school graduate salary. And as Dr. Yanellis' research showed, about 20% of borrowers went to for-profit colleges, and they are much more likely to default on their debt. Dr. Baker, let me just ask you, some of your colleagues on the panel have argued that forgiving student debt disproportionately benefits wealthier borrowers. Is that correct? So I would argue that that's correct based on the simulations that they have done. I think that there are other pieces that should also be taken into consideration. When we, if we think about the $50,000 plan as a quick example, um, what you have to keep in mind is, uh, let's think about the Department of Education just released a report that says that if you for cancel $50,000 in loans, 84% of the uh, borrowers would have all of their debt wiped out. So if you do that, then we have to think that that means 84% of those borrowers, right, they have less than $50,000. What do we know about those people? Those people are more likely to have less wealth. Those people are more likely to be black and brown. Um, the simulations that uh, my colleagues are, are talking about um, often don't either take into consideration race or they make assumptions that are not quite as um, in line with the way that sort of loan repayment works practically um, that can sometimes uh, underestimate the effects for uh, wealth generally, but also particularly racial wealth gaps. Okay, that, that's very helpful when you make the point about income and wealth. You know, the analysis, at least that I've seen uh, from others on the panel, looks only at income. But if you consider all assets, you see that people with student loan debt have lower total wealth. And there is a massive racial disparity in who has debt and how much debt they have. So uh, the primary beneficiaries of debt cancellation, as Senator Schumer and I have proposed, aren't lawyers or doctors with fancy degrees. They're people who are trying to break into the middle class and are being held back by massive debt burdens. So the new data uh, that's been released by the Department of Education for today's hearing shows that canceling up, up to $50,000 of student loan debt, as you rightly said, Dr. Baker, this is going to relieve the debt burden entirely for 36 million people. And as you've said, we have to think about this as a racial justice issue. Black and brown students take on more debt to get their degree, and they have to get more education to overcome discrimination in the job market. Black students are nearly 20 percentage points more likely to take out federal student loans than white students. And then when they graduate college, they end up earning about 20% less than white graduates. These are racial disparities that can't just be wished away. Fixing repayment programs is not enough. Um, we've heard a lot today about the problems with our current repayment programs, such as income-based repayment. And I think all of us here today, however you got here, uh, agree that we need to reform our repayment system to work better for borrowers. But Dr. Baker, let me ask, in your view, would improving programs like income-based repayment or the public service loan forgiveness, is that an adequate solution to the debt crisis? I would say no. I, I would say that the amount of reforms that most of us are talking about when we try to think about uh, the places uh, that we want to have these programs be similar to, so like Australia is a great example, the amount of reform that it requires will take years to implement within the United States. And during that time, people will still be suffering. Uh, that's why I, I talked about uh, cancellation being a tool that supplements reform so that we could work both towards reforming the system, but also trying to redress uh, the harms that we've already done to, to current borrowers. And as, as earlier folks were talking about, uh, they're talking about a recent report that came out that said only 32 people have ever achieved 
forgiveness under income-based repayment. That's not 32%. That's 32 human beings out of an estimated 2 million borrowers who could be eligible right now. It is shocking and it really drives home how much of a disaster these programs have turned out to be. Mr. Looney, I thought, put it very well when he said, you talk to people who are burdened by these debts and they just feel hopeless. There's an oppression there and I couldn't agree more. We've tried piling one complicated program on top of another to help people manage their debts. I think today we should just declare that's been a complete failure. It's time to go big and to go simple. Wipe out a big chunk of this debt and give people an opportunity to start over. Um, I think this is crucial. And then one last thing, I just want to see if we can tuck in here. Sometimes there's some confusion around the Higher Education Act and the president's authority to forgive student debt. So Attorney General Healy, I just wanted to give you an opportunity to weigh in on this. What's the legal consensus on whether President Biden has the authority to cancel student debt through executive action? Thank you. Uh, it is absolutely the case in our view, uh, and there is legal consensus that the President of the United States has the legal authority to cancel student debt. I can give you chapter and verse of 20 U.S. Code, Section 1082, and the various sub-provisions, but having analyzed this, uh, that is our view, and I believe it's a consensus view out there that the President may authorize Secretary Cardona today to, uh, to compromise and cancel these debts. Thank you. I appreciate it. You know, President Obama canceled debt for more than 70,000 students that have been cheated by for-profit colleges. President Trump and President Biden have both exercised their authority to modify student loans by pausing payments and canceling 100% of the interest that accrues during this pandemic. As we speak, the Department of Education is currently canceling about $5 billion of debt per month in interest. President Biden's legal authority is absolutely clear. So we've heard a lot of facts and figures today about student debt. I just wanna give Ms. Perez the last word here. Ms. Perez, you told Senator Smith what canceling $50,000 of student debt would mean for your family. And it was, it was a very important piece of testimony here. Can I just ask the other side of that? What are you most worried about with payments on student loan debt resuming this fall? Thank you. Um, now I have my twins in college. Um, now I'm going to have more bills to pay. Last week, I called my provider and I asked a few questions, but I'm not really clear. I have to call again and see how my payments will be in September. Um, I am just afraid that I won't be able to support my children and they will have to take more loans and go more into debt because I, I've been through it. I'm going through it and I know what that would mean. Um, for them, and it's just my anxiety is um, escalating rather quickly. I understand, and I, I appreciate your coming here to talk with us about it today. I know this is hard. You know, this student debt crisis is not about numbers on a page. It's about real people who did everything we told them to do, took out loans to get an education, secure a spot in the middle class, and who are now trapped in a cycle of debt that is about families. And that's the point you make, Ms. Perez, this is about our families. Management of the student debt crisis is a massive failure from top to bottom. Student borrowers shouldn't be left holding the bag because of the failures of loan servicers and bureaucrats. President Biden can cancel $50,000 of student debt with the stroke of a pen today. He can start to close the racial wealth gap, and he can relieve the burden on borrowers and on our economy. So that's the end of our hearing. Thank you to all of our witnesses for being here today. Thank you for providing testimony. 
Uh, before we go, I want to enter in the record a letter signed by more than 400 organizations calling on President Biden to cancel student loan debt by executive action. And for any senators who wish to submit questions for the record, those questions are due one week from today on Tuesday, April 20th. For our witnesses, you have 45 days to respond to any questions after that. So thank you again for being